those of you that were in the other elevator, my name is Zane, I'll be your power plant guy today. Now, to give you a feeling for where we are in this diagram, we're standing right here, directly over a pen stock pipe. You can see it out the windows here. Now, this pen stock pipe can carry as much as 96,000 gallons of water per second. Yep, that's up to the Olympics size swimming pool in less than seven seconds. You might be able to feel a little vibration on the floor. If you can, that's the water moving through the pipe vibrating the floor. Now, before they could start construction of the Hoover Dam, they had to divert the waters of the Colorado. In order to do that, they built four diversion tunnels, two on each side of the canyon, each about 4,000 feet long, 56 feet in diameter, lined with three feet of concrete. It took 19 months to complete those tunnels. This is one of those tunnels that we're standing in right now. Once the tunnels were completed, they built two earthen dams. The upper copper dam was 100 feet tall. That forced the waters of the Colorado into the diversion tunnels around the worksite, exiting downstream. Lower copper dam, 65 feet tall. It prevented that same water from rushing or flooding back into the worksite. Now, once the site was ready, they could start construction of the dam. The first bucket of concrete was poured June 6, 1933. Last bucket, May 29, 1935. So it took just under two years to complete the dam itself. The forms they used for the concrete were 20 foot by 20 foot up to 60 by 60 foot. They poured eight cubic yards of concrete every 78 seconds, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. When they poured an eight yard bucket into one of those forms, it would only raise the floor between three and five inches at a time. Once the dam was completed, they systematically closed off those diversion tunnels with heavy, heavy steel gates, allowing the water to flow behind the dam, creating what is now Lake Mead. It took six and a half years to fill the lake. The upper copper dam is still there, but serves no purpose. The lower copper dam was blasted away to allow the water to flow on its natural course downstream. The outer stretches of the diversion tunnels were used to create spillways to prevent flooding over the top of the dam. They act exactly like the overflow drain in your bathtub. I bet you guys use that, don't you? No? Uh, probably somebody here can tell me different. There's one on each side of the canyon. Now, these have been used twice. First time, 1941, as an operational test. It's a good thing they did that. Because in 1983, heavy spring runoff flooded the Colorado, raising the lake level within seven feet of the top of the dam. Activating the spillways, the water spilled or flowed over into the diversion tunnels around the dam on both sides, exiting safely downstream. It took 62 days for that water to recede back to normal operating lake heights. Ladies and gentlemen, that's 62 days of water flowing over the top of the spillways equal to that of Niagara Falls. Here's a picture of that event in 1983. That's the Nevada spillway right here. You can see the water flowing right over the top. The same thing was happening over here on the Arizona side. Now, ladies and gentlemen, once your tour is over today, you're welcome to walk out across the dam. If you do, I encourage you, walk over and take a look at one of those spillways. Look down. What you'll see are heavy steel plates right across the top. Well, those really aren't plates. Those are actually heavy steel gates. Heavy steel gates will swing straight up 16 feet to hold back extra water. Those gates are straight up in that picture. Holding back that much extra water, the water's still flowing over the top by about four and a half feet in that picture. Well, I was right. Think about that for a moment. We're off the top, 20 feet of extra water. Doesn't seem like all that much, right? Until you think about the surface area of Lake Mead, the largest man-made reservoir in the United States, and how much extra water that 20 feet really was. Absolutely amazing. I tell you what, folks, we can use some of that water today. Actually, we can use every drop of that water today easily. Yeah. Now, on the lake side of the dam, there are four intake towers, two on each side of the canyon. Water flows in, falls by gravity into 30-foot diameter penstock pipes. Again, this is one of those pipes out the window. The water then flows into 13-foot diameter penstock pipes onto the generators that produce electricity. The water finally exits into the tail race and continues on its normal flow downstream. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our next stop is going to be right about here on the Nevada side of the Hoover Dam power plant. Um, something special is going on today in the power plant. We have one of our generators, N6 or Nevada 6, has been torn apart really for about the last eight months. Uh, they're performing uh, service on it. Today is the day that they are putting the rotor back into place. The rotor is, uh, has been sitting right directly in front of the balcony where you folks will be in a few minutes. Um, so they use our big green bridge cranks to put it back in service. 
I don't know because I haven't been there yet, but they limit uh, where we can go while we're doing that because the cranes go right above where we stand. So bear with us. I think you guys are, are in for a treat. Okay. Uh, allow me to make my way back to the stairs. Wait for me there. I'll escort you back down the tunnel of the elevator. See you.